All right, everyone. Welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And today, super excited about bringing on another fantastic guest. As I've mentioned in, in episodes previous, is I'm working really hard to try to find guests that I think will be able to add a ton of value into your life. And today, I'm super excited about the conversation we're getting ready to have with Alan DeMonso. So Alan is a men's life coach and also the founder of the Awakened Man Movement. He's also a men's mentorship program facilitator, and his flagship program is called the Band of Brothers. Well, it's a safe and secure community with resources to help men become the best versions of themselves, which is super cool. They focus on five separate pillars, and one of those, one through five, is first one is purpose, the second one is power, the third is prosperity, the fourth is presence, and the fifth is passion. And I think we'll probably touch into a lot of those as we go through the conversation today. He also is a fellow podcaster, which I've mentioned in the past when I have podcasters on the podcast. It's always a lot of fun because we kind of know how everything works. We kind of know what to do and the questions and the, the back and forth. And it's a lot of fun. And his podcast is called The Revolutionary Man Podcast. And I was telling him before we hit record, uh, just recently, depends on when you're going to catch this one live. Uh, he just recently had a four-part series that I would highly recommend you go check out, and maybe I'll leave a link in the show notes where you can find those uh, those four episodes. They were they were really fantastic, talking about the mental health uh, for men, and I just truly appreciated that as well. And one last piece of his resume that I think is pretty cool. He's actually a culinary Olympian, which maybe we'll touch base a little bit about that as well, about his past. But I know he's super passionate about helping men discover who they truly are, uh, where they are in this journey called we're calling life, right? We're all kind of on our own ways uh, and helping each other uh, just get better every single day to achieve the life that we're truly desire. So without further ado, Alan, appreciate you coming on the show, man. This can be a lot of fun. Uh, Randy, thank you so much for having me on the show today. And I'm really looking forward to our conversation. I'm sure we'll dive into lots of those things you just brought up to, to in the moment, last moment here. Yeah, that's the whole idea for sure, is to dive in as deep as you possibly can, help the audience here today. It'll be a lot of fun. So take a few minutes. I always love to open up the floor and get everybody a chance to get to know you a little bit better. I went through a little bit of the bullet point list of kind of the things that you've done. I also mean, even mentioned that you're a culinary Olympian, which that's interesting as well. Maybe you can touch base a little bit about that too, but share as much as uh, you can. It's about your story. Let everybody know, get to know you a little bit better. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think, you know, for all of us, if we take our, let's go back to being ch children, you know, maybe teenagers, and you're thinking about what do you want your life to become? And I can remember, I wanted to be a professional sports player, like football. And, you know, I'm only five, nine. And, you know, back then, I don't, I made this decision. I don't think they're going to, they're going to recruit a, you know, a sh small 120 pound soaking wet, five, eight guy, five, nine guy. And so what was the other passions could I have in my, I had in my life, and I really enjoyed cooking. And, you know, I'm 58 years old. And so maybe some of your audience remember some of these shows, maybe they won't. But I remember coming home from school and, and watching the Galloping Gourmet with Graham Kerr. And what I really enjoyed about Graham is that he would do these classic French dishes, but he always had this big glass of wine. And at the end of the show, he'd show you how to make the dish. And then he'd sit down at the dining room table, he had a guest, and there they would be eating, you know, and drinking wine. And it just looked so much fun. And so from a very young age, that's what I wanted to do. And the reason I bring that up is that I think in our lives, we think that we have, we may have this one singular purpose, one singular mission, because we talk a lot about that in my men's work. And while that was true for a number of years, it ultimately really was just a catalyst to get to me where I am today. And so I ultimately ended up by becoming a chef and you know, between watching Graham Care and the Galloping Gourmet and then Three's Company and who didn't want to be Jack Tripper living with two single <laughs> ladies, and, you know, like what a great life. And, but uh, for me, I decided to marry my high school sweetheart and, and we got started on our building our lives together and having children and buying a house and all the stuff that you do. And in that moment, while all of that is going on, I was very fortunate in my career too mentor under a gentleman who was competing in the world culinary Olympics. And it falls in the same, same cycle that the summer Olympics. So they would just be having it now it's in the fall. So we're coming close to the time of recording is going to be getting close to the end of August. So sometime around October, the guys will be heading over guys and gals will be heading over to Frankfurt, Germany for this outstanding competition. And in the early in mid eighties, Canada 
the national team was actually ranked number one in the world. And we had won a couple of times. Now I wasn't on the national team. I was on a regional team, but I was so blessed to be able to work with some amazing men at that time to figure out what it would take to really put together showpieces and compete and at the highest possible level. And what I realized about myself is that I found out that that's when I started to battle things like the imposter syndrome. And maybe we'll talk about that down the road and how we, we have these dreams and the desires. And as we lean into it, maybe we find out that we have some insecurities about who we are. So some of these insecurities started to show up in my personal life as well. And so while I was successful at the culinary Olympics and winning a couple of silver medals, my personal life was falling apart because I, I was so insecure. And the challenge with that is that it ultimately cost me everything. It cost me uh, financially. We end up by getting separated and divorced and bankruptcy. You know, I ended up by going into a, a fairly deep depression, which I didn't really understand. That's what was happening. And I hardly saw my children. And so a lot of the work that I do today does stem back to that that catalyst, that time in my life when everything fell apart. And, you know, if I fast forward from that in my early 30s to 25 years later, you know, that the same type of scenario almost repeated itself. And just out of the sheer will of my, and really the blessing of my wife, that she gave me an opportunity to really dive into who do I, I am as a man, and because of that, because I had an opportunity to actually work on things, work on who I was, I was able to help, I was able to salvage my second marriage because I almost lost that one for, for similar, I, for similar things that were going on in my life. And I think the reason that I got to this point in my life and doing men's work is I found throughout, as I look back, these catalyst moments that help define who we are, refine who we are. We understood, we, I understood that there are not a lot of resources for guys. And the biggest challenge that we find in doing this men's work is that for a lot of us guys, we still have this idea that I got to do it alone, that I'm embarrassed, that I feel shame, that I'm afraid to step forward and ask for help. And, you know, when my father-in-law passed away a few years back and, and I was the one who, you know, found him, we, he lives a few blocks from us and we purposely wanted to come back to, to this neighborhood so we could be closer to, to my wife's parents. And uh, he and I just had a, just a great bond. He's got two daughters and, you know, we were just like the son he just never had. And you know, we'd have great conversations about who was the greater dynasty was it the Montreal Canadians or the New York Yankees. And, you know, I had the upper hand at him for a while because we had more championships <laughs> and then the Yankees won a couple of, couple of uh, pennants and then that was it right so but when I found him uh, cause he had had an accident in the in the washroom like everything in my life just dropped and I found myself again at this place this position in life about what am I going to do you know I reached out to a couple of friends no disrespect to my to my buddies they didn't know how to help they didn't know how to how to support I went to some grief counseling, you know, did some marriage counseling. None of that stuff was really working because I didn't get an opportunity to really be seen and heard. And because of that was hap wasn't happening, it was difficult to do any healing work. And so I decided that it was time for me to start doing some men's work and to do and, and be in that position to help guys go through whatever transition in their life. And I think we have that in three different areas. We have it in our professional careers, depending on where, how, where we're at, we'll have it in our personal lives, like our own goals, right? Remember I started talking about, hey, I wanted to be a football player. And then, you know, I was, then I was a chef, an Olympic chef, but that was really, a, these were just things that were leading me to ultimately what my true mission is. And that is to be of service and to help men grow and become the best father, husband, leader, and brother that they can. You know, and then the third place is in their relationships. And so when our, any of those or a combination of those are in turmoil, if we don't have somewhere that we can go to work on our things, to, to develop new skills, to learn how to communicate and to really with ourselves first before with others, then we're going to struggle in life. And, and 
it just my heart breaks when I see men struggle. I see men not able to uh, ha handle their life, handle what's going on, because I know that they're inside of them that they they want more, but nobody was, has been around to show them how to do it. And so, you know, really in a nutshell, that's my that's my life's been my life's mission, and really what has taken me from a young young man to where I am today. Love it. So that work is awesome. And as I mentioned, that's why I wanted to have you on the show. It's, uh, it's one of those, those things, even for myself, you mentioned about being kind of the lone wolf and just kind of doing things on your own. And we're not necessarily taught these things as men. Um, I have a son. I know you have a, a son. I think you have two sons. Um, I know that I've struggled even to try to teach him because I didn't necessarily know either. That's actually part of my story is that uh, as I've discovered things through my personal development journey, and I began sharing some things with my father because they were life-changing for me, I discovered he didn't know. I thought he was keeping it from me. And it, that wasn't the case at all. He wasn't taught. So, you, so it goes back generationally. So now I have a grandson and it's like, that's my mission right now to make sure that, that whatever lack thinking or whatever uh, non-emotional or, or connection, all the things that you just shared uh, as far as for the men's piece, I need to make sure that that stops with me as much as I possibly can, me and my son. So that way we don't share it and continue on with that. Our next generation of men in the Wilson household for their families and for their communities and for, you know what I mean? It just, it's a ripple effect, a ripple effect that will, it'll just go on for eternity if I can get this part right. So that's where I'm super excited about this conversation. So let's unpack that just a little bit more. And as far as uh, where, if, as I mentioned, for like my father, he didn't have any idea. So nor did I at the moment, right? So as we are going through our life, we're just going through the, the mundane, we're getting up, we're going to work, let's say we have a job, but but we're coming to that realization that there's got to be more to life than just this, right? Mm -hmm. The the grind, the stuff, the promotions, the the whatever it is that they're the goals that you mentioned, right? That we might be going for. Help me with a person that might be listening today that is like, okay, there's got to be more to this. And where, where would they even begin to get started? Uh, we talk about the men's group and we're going to get into where the people yeah. can get in communication with you to get uh, help, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or in a group group setting. But is there anything you can help the, that man out there that's listening today that's like, that's literally just kind of hearing this kind of thing for the very first time? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, a great starting point is to really take a, you know, an assessment of where you're at in life. And, and what I mean by that is we, we, I started my story talking about these goals, these things that I wanted to be in life. And they were all external things, right? It's about being, it was about being a chef. It's about being a football player. And so whatever that being part is for you, what do you have to become in order to achieve that? It's not about being those other things. It's about what do we, what do you have to become? It's a transformation. And so the starting point is really looking at what is your purpose in life? And we figure out that purpose through lots of different, lots of different mechanisms. And one of the ones that I found that has worked well for me every, any time that I find that I'm, that I'm out of alignment is I go back to this, ex, this values assessment exercise and what the values ass assessment exercise tells does and tells people is if I say that family is important to me in this through this exercise then I then the flip side to that is well what actions show are in alignment with that value and so if if you say family is important to you because that was one that I would would have said if you would have asked the 30 year old Alan you know what's important to you and I would have said for sure my marriage and my family is really important but the reality of it is is that my career was more important. And so my focus was in another area. Now there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. However, if we're in, we're in relationship and doesn't matter man or man or woman, we are all in, we are all here to be in relationship relationship. When we think about that, we think about it externally. We think about it in family and spouse and friends. But the relationship starts with ourself and we don't have a great relationship. I'm finding anyways, is that as men, we generally don't have a great relationship with ourselves because we don't 
have do these types of assessments. We don't understand where we're in alignment with the things that we say that we value and our actions that go along with it. And so once we can come, once we're clear on that and we can see that, hey, through this exercise, I'm saying that family is important to me, that, you know, my, yes, my career is important to me and, and, uh, and I want to, you know, and, uh, you know, my spirituality is important to me. It wasn't when I was a 30 year old man, I'll tell you that right now. And that was one thing that I'm really working on with my, with my youngest son, who's in that age bracket. But then is to go and well, what are the things that I need to do that align with that? What are the things that I, that I need, how I need to show up? And I, and I remember reading Stephen Covey's book, The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People years ago. And what I, the big takeaway I got from that, well, a couple of them, but one of the biggest takeaways was how he did everything in one week, you know, uh, time slots. And what I like about that process is that when I, challenge myself to do that work in a, in a seven day block, it's easier for me to become the man that I say I wish to become, be in alignment with my values, because I can put that now in block it into my calendar and put time into there to really make sure that I'm actually at my actions are in alignment with what I say I, that I want to do. And then the other part of that is, is you know, you have to do that work first. And then it's the second part of that is if you are in a relationship, you are in marriage and you, and you have children, is to sit down and have this conversation with your wife and to talk to her about the things that are important to you. And the reason why you want to do that is you want it to so that she is clear. Because a lot of times I think, you know, especially in marriage, you know, if you've been married for a little while, you can almost finish each other's sentences. You kind of have an idea what the conversation is going but do you really truly know what really motivates your wife or does she really truly know what motivates you you know and what's demotivating and if you and unless you're willing to have those conversations it's going to be a struggle and and so i think that's really the key to start is that we have to understand that we're in alignment with what we value and as soon as you start unpacking values the other side of that coin is is our limiting beliefs because that's when that that other guy on the shoulder is going to come up and start telling you about how this isn't going to work or that's not really who you are. See, because this is who, really who you want, who you are. And, and I find that that's that piece that when we start to work on, when I work with men on getting them in alignment with their values and then, you know, let's, what are the beliefs around that value that you have and are they empowering beliefs or are they disempowering? And we start to reshape that for them, help them reshape it. And then we can start to move forward towards having the conversations, you know, with our, with our wives. And depending on how deep you want to go with it, it could be with your children, depends how old your children are. There's always opportunity for us to mentor. We can mentor in a lot of different ways. And so as to answer the question, sorry to be a bit long-winded there, but I, I really truly feel strongly that it's really about getting in alignment with our values and understanding the belief structures that we have around them. So the word that's coming to mind as you're making that description is like courage, having the courage to be able to sit with yourself and have those thoughts. So if someone, and I, I'll even just put myself in that place, right? As I was discovering things for myself, it was conjuring up all kinds of thoughts and feelings and emotions from within that I didn't know what they were coming from, right? Right. Like you said, that, that, that self-doubt was creeping in. It's like, mm. who are you to think that you can or you can't? Uh, you mentioned earlier about imposter syndrome that might come about. I've had that as well. It, it's, it's, for example, even just creating this podcast. I mean, who am I? This was years ago, right? Who am I to think that I have enough value to add to anybody to think that I could get on an episode and record my thoughts, record my feelings, which is what is what I actually try to do with the podcast. I actually just yeah. launched an episode today that was about self-doubt. And I was talking about a personal experience that I'm having right now with some self-doubt that I'm doing that to try to ha add value back. Uh, so I guess my the question that I have is if, if when you start to go down this path of self-discovery, mm. how much courage, are, I mean, how finding someone to help you through the process is, would be invaluable. I honestly, I've done a lot of it myself, but I've had a lot of, of virtual mentors, I would say. I wouldn't necessarily call them one-on-one, -on -one. but uh, help the gentleman that's listening right now that's like going through that piece and having the courage to step into it, right? 
but then to own that self doubt and then move beyond that. Cause that to me, that's like a huge step um, to discover who you're truly meant to be when you're moving forward in your life. Yeah, that's a great question, Randy. I think the, the you know, the key part of that is that it's, it's the, to, when we talk about having courage and we don't mean that there's no fear, we mean that we're going to, we're using courage to manage our fear because the challenge with, with fear, and we're going through a lesson plans right now on with the seven messengers of fear. And one of the things that we're, that we recognize as men is that fear shows up for us in lots of different ways. It shows up in our emotions and and so when do we start to become in tune with what's actually happening to us, then we can, we can use the right tool to overcome that fear or that, and use that tool. And the tool really is the courage, the courage to, to challenge that mindset. So when we're having the issue of the imposter syndrome, it's always the imposter syndrome is really about our ego trying to protect us. That's really the essence of what's happening there because it doesn't know if it can survive if you change too much. So it wants to protect you. And so that's what it's always telling you. It's always telling you to, to you know, are you sure? Are you really sure you want to do that? And in, in the essence, that's what's happening. And so finding the courage is really about who is in your life that has, has moth that can, that you could model what they're doing to help you overcome that piece that you're battling right now. And maybe there is somebody and maybe there isn't, but as you just mentioned, there's lots of virtual uh, mentors out there, podcasts, uh, lots of different things happen going on books. I know for me, one of the first mentors in my early thirties was I came across uh, Jack Canfield's uh, tape series is Nightingale Conant tape series, six cassettes. That's how old I am cassettes. And uh, <laughs> I'm right there with you, man. Don't feel bad. <laughs> yeah. you know, And I still have a ton. I'm looking over to my office. So I have a ton of Nightingale stuff, but it was self-esteem and peak performance. And Jack mm -hmm. Canfield was my mentor for probably seven months. Every day. I listened to those tapes. I listened to those tapes so much that not only did I memorize the entire workshop, word for word, but I wore the tapes out <laughs> and you don't need a mentor. The mentor doesn't need to be necessarily somebody physical and present, although that is the best. It is the best to be able to be, you know, in the presence of other men to do that work, but just finding that one catalyst. And, you know, what really led me to that catalyst was just having an opportunity to listen to somebody else recommend something. And then the courage for me was to say, yeah, I'm willing to give that a try. Doesn't need, doesn't mean we need to, I wasn't trying to climb, climb Mount Rushmore in, in a single bound. What it meant was I just was willing to take one step just to do one thing. And then that's how we start to build, you know, confidence and we build more competence in our, in what we can do. And so it, it's about just being willing to move forward, even just the smallest inch or step that allows us to really make the, make the transition for a total transformation of who we are. But if we're not even willing to do that, then we're going to struggle mightily. And I think that's really what the, it really was the men's mental health series was all about was really having us unpack and understanding what though, what happens to us when we don't take action and we feel that we just have nowhere to turn to. And there is lots of places to turn to today. The amount of folks such as yourself, Randy, and my work and tons of others doing men's work, there's opportunity for you. You just need to find, you know, pay attention to a few things, check us out, see what's the right fit. But there's people here that are wanting to help. And uh, I think there's a lot of opportunity for, for men to really overcome some of these issues. Love it. So the reference of Nightingale Conant, that would be a good resource. Uh, Earl Nightingale, I've got lead the field up here on my shelf. Uh, I've, this is probably the third or fourth copy because I've burned through it several times and I could recite it word for word as well. Yeah. Uh, but that's where I began also. So I just want to reiterate that that's, if someone is literally at the very beginning realizing that, okay, this whole life thing isn't the whole grind, the whole working for stuff, the whole not necessarily being fulfilled, uh, with passion, with purpose, and this can't be it. I would agree. It, it can't be it. And that those resources at, at Nightingale Conant would be a fantastic 
uh, place to start podcast. Uh, listening to us here today. We greatly appreciate you spending your time with us here today uh, and go and find Alan on his podcast, the revolutionary man podcast. And as I mentioned, his uh, the last that four part series, which he just mentioned it just here just a second ago. And I'm going to have him dive a little deeper into that. If he can go into as much detail as he possibly can. Uh, each one was about 20 to 30 minutes and it was really, really good. I would consider myself relatively good with the whole I'm not great. I'm not perfect by any means. That's not, don't take that the wrong way. But at the same time, you know, I've, I've, I've worked on myself a lot mm -hmm. and the content that he was sharing with that was like, it was really eye opening even for myself. So I would highly recommend it. Like I mentioned at the very beginning, I'll, I'll leave a link in the show notes so you can go check that out for yourself. So yeah, let's pivot into that. If you don't mind, let's sure. maybe unpack that four part series as deep as you possibly can. Uh, the mental health, uh, struggles that us men are having out there trying to accomplish more, be more, do more, have more, but at the end of the day, just feeling empty. Uh, and I think it's creating a lot of conflict uh, with its with ourself, with our families, with our communities, um, which I think is creating a lot of the chaos that we're seeing in our exterior 3D world. But if we go to work on ourselves, that's been my experience. Is I, the harder I work on me and my thoughts and my ideas and my awarenesses, then I can then impact my immediate surroundings, which has then made the biggest difference in my life. As I mentioned, I'm focusing on me, my family, right? My son, my grandson, trying to focus, make sure that it doesn't continue on further than that. Anyways, I just wanted to kind of put the little uh, buffer in there as far as talking about your four-part series was fantastic, kind of helping me think even a little bit deeper than that. Um, so yeah, we'd love for it to take a few seconds. Let's unpack that a little bit, if we don't mind. Yeah, not at all. So <clears throat> I did the four-part uh, series on men's mental health because I think it's, you know, we, we struggle with men uh, with mental health and, you know, the statistics around suicide are pretty, pretty startling. You know, men are four times more likely to commit suicide than, than women. And it's because we're going to, going to choose something that's far more lethal. And when we get to that point, it's because we've lost lots of, we've lost despair. We have no idea of who we are any longer. And while they're for, you know, if, you, if we were to talk about from a, a woman's perspective, they've had lots to deal with in life as well, right? That's the sexualization of who they are and just how advertising and, and everything happens. I think it's even worse today as you, if you look at any type of social media today, those, you know, that is just prevalent and it's all about the sex appeal. But for men, the other side, what we're up against is we need to be this provider. You know, we need to be this guy who has the... The, at least a six figure income has got the, has the nice car, has the big house so that they can provide this, this upscale stat type of lifestyle. And that's part of that is driven by society. And, you know, a large part of that is, and the other part of it is, is us, you know, thinking that that's what it means to be a man. And so we really need to unpack, you know, that first part of the series was really about <laughs> understanding and or unmasking strength. So what does strength look like? Or for some of us, we feel, and even to me, uh, even to, as I do men's work, because I'm not, uh, you know, I say my work, I'm not the guru here. Uh, you know, I, I've been down the path on a couple of paths, maybe a little bit further along the way than some others. But this is about working together and, and helping collaborate and build, build better men together. But when we think about unmasking strength, what I'm talking about in that part is, what does it mean to have strength? Well, strength is about, and, you know, in, you know, we talk about being things being vulnerable, we need to be vulnerable. Well, how about I put it this way for the our, our male listening audience? Can you just be real? Like stop, take the mask off, stop pretending everything's fine if it's not. And if when we can do that, then we can start to have so the strength because that's what we talked earlier about courage. Courage is about having the strength to admit that I need help. I need help. I need help. And I don't know where to get it. And being able to do that as a first step and knowing that it's okay. And now there may be some people in your life that that's uncomfortable for them. And so they may push you back and they may, Hey, I, I, I don't know. And they don't, you know, they won't, maybe they don't want to return a call or don't want to participate. That isn't about you. That's about where they're at and what they're trying to, and what they're dealing with. And so, the first part was really trying to help guys understand that the strength is about admitting about where we are. What's the reality of the, my situation today? And 
and what's going on for me. And when we can start at that point, then at least we have a base level to move on from. And then, so once that starts to happen, you know, the second part was really about now unpacking some other pieces that, you know, we find in, in dealing with men's mental health. And that's really around these ideas of anxiety and depression. And as I talked about, I didn't really understand when I was in my early and late twenties and early thirties, when life was falling apart, that there was so much anxiety and this anxiety and this depression you know, ultimately led into depression because what anxiety does is it, it suppresses anything that's good in your life, right? Cause everything is fear-based. I don't know if I can do this. Uh, I don't know if I can pay all the bills. Uh, I'm a new father. I, I, I don't know if I can, you know, if I can be a good dad or will I be a good dad? I, I, I work too much. And then we have these conversations and if they continue for too long and there isn't a way to release it healthily in a healthy way, then it leads into depression. And depression's that time when we're just not able to, to really move forward. And so it takes enormous amount of courage to start to move forward. And that's the real truth of it. I, I don't want to, you know, we're talking about men's mental health, so I don't want to uh, sugarcoat it. It does take a tremendous amount of strength, but not impossible, just a tremendous amount of strength. And it's that one piece. Have you ever seen, I th always think of the, of the analogy of, do you ever see these, these uh, strongman competitions and they have to move a, like a fire engine or something like that. And all the energy that it takes to get that thing started just to move an inch. But once that first inch starts in that, that vehicle is moving, it gets easier and easier. And so it, it is about being able to, how to manage that. And so some of the ways we talk about managing anxiety and depression is, you know, doing mindfulness practices. So one of the things that has been a big part in my life is making sure that I've, I have time daily for meditation. You know, I, uh, I, I read something that's inspiring. If that's a, if that's a, the Bible for you or whatever, that's fine. Just find something. And it's a 20, 15 to 20 minutes. It doesn't, we're not, I'm not asking anybody here to be a monk and do that work. But what I'm asking you to do is to find that time to just be calm with yourself. You know, breath work is another great thing that another great tool in the toolbox. I like the simple box breath, you know, Navy SEALs use that all the time, especially when they're in situations of high stress. It helps, it helps slow themselves down to become, become more calm. And so if breath work is okay for a Navy SEAL, I think it's okay for us too. <laughs> you know, the third part of the, uh, of, of the series was talking about thriving under pressure. And what I was really trying to get across in that episode was really about understanding resilience and what are the coping mechanisms we have? Because in our lives, we are where we are today because we've developed all of these coping mechanisms. And I don't know too many people have, uh, that are in, in life that have had a perfect childhood. I know I didn't have a perfect childhood. Now, it wasn't the worst childhood, but there were things that could have been a lot better. But we developed these coping mechanisms. And for a large part of our, of our lives, they worked. They, they kept us safe. They, they got us to where we are today. You know, so, we, so I always... I'm always thankful for the coping mechanisms that, that got me to where I am today. So then the question is, are they still serving me today? Is shutting down and being, having quiet time serving me? I'm an introvert. Uh, and so while I enjoy being around people, for me, I need to be away in my, in my own space. Now, the flip side of that coin is I have to be careful because I can become too much isolated. And then that doesn't, that coping mechanism of trying to reach and generate my energy and get ready to take on the day becomes a deterrent. And so I had to understand that how this mechanism, this coping mechanism I'm using is, is serving me and now it's no longer serving me. So it's a chain, do something different. Okay. That means now I need to reach out to somebody or go out for a walk and, and engage with people, go come out of my home office here and go talk, speak with my wife and but to understand and, and recognize these triggers that are happening. And then the last piece of the men's mental health series is really talking about, you know, really creating a supportive environment and seeking help. And, and I'm not going to be, I'm not going to sit here and say you should never seek professional help because I think professional help is really important. 
And I think it's also important to surround yourself in men's work. And there's lots of stuff going around in the, in North America and around the world, uh, quite frankly, where you can get in with other men who are working through things. And so, you know, I have a, a, a doctor here in the city that I work at and he deals with men's men who are having, you know, e having challenges with their sexual health, their functionality and their, and how they, how life is for them. Cause a lot of us as guys, I'll put my hand up as being one of them, you know, we, you know, being virile, being, you know, sexual, sexual with our wives is very important to us. But if that's is something that you struggle with, then you need to get professional help. But because I've had, I've built a relationship with gentlemen, he also recognizes and agrees that while he can do the clinical side of the business for that, in, that, that gentleman, there's this other part that he needs, that gentleman needs as well. And he needs community. Hmm. And he needs community to help support him through that, a place where he, that's safe for him. And so, you know, in our community, we talk about not, you know, being, a, being free from shame and blame and judgment. And, and while we have, and while we're really, you know, I'm really firm on the, on all of those, and especially on the judgment, it doesn't mean we don't have, we won't hold you compassionately accountable for what it is that you're trying to work on because we want to see you grow. We want to support you and help you grow. And so the series is really about trying to take us from where we are today, where we think that it's, that we're weak men. If we admit that there's problems going on, that, that our, that our mental health, we're challenged with handling stress. I think stress, every generation I think says that they've had the most stressful generation. I, I don't know. I think with the, since the uh, popularity of social media, I think it's got so much worse. It doesn't matter if you're eight, 18, 28 or 58. If you're on social media and you're on it too much, it's going to have an effect on your, on your mental health. And so the idea was to take men through a journey. I have some examples of guys, you know, and some of what their journey was like and how they've utilized some of the tools that are provided in each of the episodes to help them. And then ultimately to find community, find a community that, can support you. And, and that can look in a lot of different ways. And so for me, obviously it'll be about doing men's work, but for others, it may be 12 step programs, which are, are excellent as well. Fantastic. So let's dive into a little bit more about the band of brothers. Let's talk about the community itself. I would love for you to kind of unpack what that, what that looks like. So once again, just imagine someone's hearing this type of thing for the first time. They're not sure. Uh, they're curious. They want to know, like, where can I be vulnerable, but not being feel like being attacked or judged or anything like that, right? The compassionate accountability. I like that as well. Uh, unpack that a little bit. As far as the Band of Brothers, uh, the service that you provide, kind of what that looks like for an individual that's, that's you know, dipping their toe in the water, trying to figure out if that's going to be the right fit for them. Yeah. Maybe just describe it a little bit more in detail. Yeah, absolutely. So we say, uh, you know, we're a band of brothers and, uh, you know, the, really the tagline is, is that we're ordinary guys working towards living extraordinary lives. And so the real, you know, the real key of our group, I would say, is that every man comes in with a different mission for what they are looking to work through. And so one of the very first things that we do with for each of the guys is they I have them go through a questionnaire. I decided years ago to take it out of a different program I was offering at the time. And it gives them an opportunity. I call it the, an integrity challenge. And what the integrity challenge does is have you look at six different pillars in your life. So emotional, physical, spiritual, professional, and personal. And when you look at all these different areas, then we get a, you give yourself a, a score and then give up a little tool that helps you give you an understanding of what it is that you, where you need to start working. And from there, the focus of the, of each man in our group is to, is to develop a purpose mission statement for the next 12 months. And the reason to do that is that we want to have meaning to the group because each meeting we have, we meet twice a month on a, uh, every month. And while there's tr lessons and stuff and work that we're going to go through based on so these five pillars that uh, that I've developed, but also it's an opportunity for each each man to share where he is on his personal journey, and this opportunity for us to help support him on that, 
And whether that is a, a compassion and accountability or encouragement, or whatever it is that, that he needs. And it's, a, it's an opportunity for him to see what it is to be in the presence of other men and to have respect because as men, we tend to, we tend to not always get that. You know, I think of my childhood and, you know, and especially when you're playing sports, you know, you're, you're always being, there's lots of hazing going on and depending on who you were and were you the, one of the cool kids in the group, that hazing could be pretty, pretty rough, right? Well, so we, we really need and desire to have respect. We also want to know that, that we're also going to be, we're going to have support and love. And what does that mean for a man to be loved? It means that he is, he's able to be seen, heard, and knows that there isn't any, there is not going to be any opportunity for him to feel any shame. And that's why for us, the, those pillars are so important that we need to make sure that they created this safe space. And so we have, while we have regular topics, we also have your each on your own mission. And, you know, we make sure that we've all follow 12 principles and we work on a principle a month. I like, you know, Ben Franklin's model of what he did and he was developing his character. Now he did it at a week at a time and, and he had a, he had a few more and he would do them all over and over again. We follow a similar model. So we have, I call it the code of honor. And so each pillar, each month has a different pillar. So we do brotherhood, authenticity, servant leadership, spiritual, fearlessness, vulnerability, grit, strength, wisdom, love, temperance, and discipline. And each month there's an exercise for us to practice, to get an opportunity to really develop that. And the reason why we want to do this is to help us develop our character, helps us really reveal different parts of ourselves. And so it was quite interesting as we did the in the month on doing love is how does we how do we show love as men? Well, I asked men to reach out and talk to somebody that they haven't spoken to in a while. You know, really listen to what they have to say. Because that's a sign of love for us. It's about, hey, uh, you're a father. When was the last time you were at your your child's soccer practice? You know, modern men today are more apt to that. But if you're a little bit older guy and I'm you know, I have grandchildren. I think you mentioned you had grandchildren as well. How much mm -hmm. am I participating in that? And so how do I, how can I show them that I love and care for them? Well, you do that by being present, do that by being in, in, the, in that space. And so it's a, it's a powerful program. We meet, uh, we meet virtually and in person. If you're in the Winnipeg area, we, we meet in person. If not, we meet virtually. And it's an opportunity for men to work on things and work on really developing who they are. And that's my goal. The goal is to have guys stick around for the rest of our lives. Although I appreciate it. They do because in our work, I believe that we need to find three mentors in our lives. We need to find, we need to be, we need to find our mentor, someone to help us guide us. We need a fellow mentor to go along with us, a fellow participant to come along so we can mentor each other on our journey. And then we need to find a mentee, somebody who's maybe just a little bit behind, just getting started in his journey and, and help them mentor and help them come along. And so while the work isn't to be here forever with us, the, the work is to be here long enough so that you've been able to pay it back to somebody else. And once you've done that, then, then you've completed your, truly you've completed your mission. And so we look forward to seeing more and more men come to our group and participating and growing and becoming stronger fathers and brothers and husbands and leaders. Creating that ripple effect. I mentioned that earlier and that's really what I'm trying to do with my work. And it sounds like that's really what it's all about, right? You, you work on yourself to the point where then you can give back and share. And as you're doing that, it's just creating a ripple effect in places that you might not even be aware of, but it's, you know, it's happening. You just know it is, uh, because it's happening from within yourself and that's where it's, it's super fun. So I'm imagining somebody that uh, you mentioned about, you know, obviously you're having people come into the group. So I imagine they might come in a little timid, little un unsure of themselves, right? Maybe that self doubt that uh, fear is creeping in a little bit. Uh, but I was hoping maybe you could uh, maybe share a little bit of a, a success story. Maybe somebody that came in a little bit timid, uh, unsure of themselves, uh, had some internal battles that they were dealing with, whether it's either internal or, or even in their exterior 3D world. Yeah. Maybe take us through a journey of someone that has really come through the program of the Band of Brothers, and they might even still be involved in this matter. But 
kind of maybe what it's impacting or how it's impacted themselves. Is there a story like that you can think of? Yeah, absolutely. So I think of this one gentleman who came to us and he came to us uh, for, uh, he was struggling with his, with his marriage. Uh, and the reason why he was struggling with his marriage, he had, he had come through uh, an addiction piece. Uh, so he had done some work, some really great work through there, but he still needed to do work on repairing the, his relationship with his, with his wife and his children. And so when he came to us, it, while he participated, what I saw from him was he was still holding back. And I think was the, the, the piece is there. And for a lot of guys, when you're coming into starting something new, you're, it's still a measuring piece. Like we're still trying to measure, is this really a safe space? And, you know, do I, you know, do I really, am I really a fit? And when you start asking yourself those questions, it's, it can, it can lead to not wanting to come back because I've, I've seen that happen far too often. But this, kudos to this guy. He kept coming out. And one of the things that I do in my men's work is that, so we have a bit of a process that so we go through. So there's a, an opening check-in. And then we go through, uh, I have a, a prayer, an opening prayer, an invocation, and a, and a benediction at the end of the, at the, end of the uh, meeting. And then we also have some reading, a little bit of reading that we'll do. And I purposefully make sure that to uh, make sure to call other gentlemen out to, to read something or to, to, to speak towards something. And so I was doing that with this guy. Uh, so everybody gets the same get, gets it all. So it's about helping us become uncomfortable, right? It's about, you talked about courage. Here's some courage. Don't worry about fumbling over the words, just start speaking. And so he started to do that. And so, you know, he did, the, he would do after the opening check-in, I'd ask him to, okay, could you do our invocation? You know, let's bring uh, spirit into our, into our presence and help us, uh, help us, you know, be in a, in the right mindset for this conversation today so that we can receive the lessons so we can hear the lessons and then we can embody them as we leave. And so he, he would do that. And what I found over the course of a few months is that, and so my work is online so there's a membership portal and each guy goes through and there's questions. So from the lesson plans, there's questions. Well, this guy went from not really participating much and talking a little bit to like he was writing a novel and, and just spilling everything that he had that was on his heart. And so I started to ask him questions about that. Well, I checked with him first to say, Hey, I'll use my name, Al, are you all right with talking that we can bring this forward? Because what you were sharing with me personally, because on online, it's only I get to see that uh, with the other guys, because I think what you're sharing is going to be really important for a few other guys in the group. And he was a little hesitant and said, finally, he said, yeah, okay, I'll do that. And so we talked about his, his, the shame he felt for not being the father and the husband that he wanted to be because of his addiction. And I got to tell you, like I'm choked up talking about it now. Like the guys were, holy man, I didn't realize this is what you were going through. And then they started to share what they're going through. <clears throat> and the power behind that is we, we only know masculinity when it's modeled, when we see it happening when guys are getting real with shit, excuse my language. But when they get, when we get real, then we start to, we can actually flourish. We can take the, that shackle that of shame that we carry this mask and we can throw that off and we can go, Hey, you know what? Like, man, I, I'm not doing dealing exactly with what you're dealing with, but I know what that feels like. I know what shame feels like. And from that point on, like this guy was like bang on guys at the end of meetings would come and want to talk to him. And, you know, they, I always encourage the guys to stay in touch with each other outside of the group. And we spent a couple of plus years with us and he's no longer with us. He's moved on other, you know, life happens and people move, other things happen. But I got to tell you, watching that transformation, you know, in the moment, and I didn't know that, Hey, he's going to say this stuff. This is what's going to go down. But boy, like, like I said, like this was a few years back. It still hits me today to see the, the transformation of all the guys in that moment. And I think that's why 
I get up every day and I want to do men's work. I just, you know, it's, it's not a full-time uh, gig for me just yet, but I'll tell you when I see this kind of stuff and the second Tuesday of the month and the fourth Tuesday of the month come along, I just, I, my heart just races. I just love being in the presence of other men and, and leading and helping us, all of us grow to be, I keep saying, you know, the best fathers, husbands, and leaders that we can. So yeah, that's one that that's really, uh, has really resonated with me. Appreciate you sharing. I, so stories, right? Stories are the best way to help communicate with a lot of folks. And that, yeah, that story I think will resonate with a lot of, of the listeners out there today. Uh, so I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, with us. And you've shared a ton of wisdom with us already today. Uh, this has been such a fun conversation. I knew it would be. Uh, just the topic of men's, just being men, right? How to show up, how to be, how to become the person that we're meant to be. I know it's not really discussed, probably maybe in mainstream. And so you're going to have to hear it in places like this on this podcast and in the podcast uh, of yourself, uh, which is super cool that you're out there doing the work, paving the road for guys just like me trying to figure this whole thing called life, trying to become the best versions of ourselves, uh, which uh, just thank you for doing the work because it's, it's much needed. And uh, yeah, just even from that story, you can tell that it's impacting a lot of, a lot of people out there. So as we start to wrap this one up, bring this in for a close, I would love for you to, is there anything else, just a nugget of wisdom, even some sharing, some hope, some wisdom, anything like that, that is on your heart, uh, one last piece that we might be able to share the, the listeners with uh, to help them take this conversation and go out there and create their own ripple effect with their families, with their communities. Uh, anything that's on your heart at this point? Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's a, I think of the Hindu proverb about, uh, you know, when you help uh, your brother's boat get to across the shore, yours gets there as well. And, um, you know, man, we can, we can make life on our own or we can make it with others. And so I, I always say life is a do it yourself project. That doesn't mean do it by yourself. It means do it for yourself. And you do that by be, being part of community. And while that may be challenging for, for some of us, and depending on where we're at, there are people here ready to help. But it takes one thing to do, and that is just to reach out, send an email, book a clarity call, do just take that one step and know and trust that the universe, everything is aligning for you and your greatness. It's just waiting for us to do something about it. And so if I can leave anybody with anything, it'd be to just take one small step. You're not going to jump Mount Everest in one jump. It takes one step and just do that one, whatever that is for you. And I guarantee you, your life is going to improve so much than just by doing that thing alone. Love it. Couldn't agree more. So folks are out there thinking that their first step potentially is to get in contact with you, learn more from you, whether it's your free content with your podcast, or even it's like you said, maybe even just a connection call, something to try to get uh, the ball rolling, trying to figure out if this is for them. Uh, where are the best places for people to get connected with you, Alan? Yeah, you know, the best place for, to do that is to go to my website, theawakenedman.net. And you go to the website right now, there's a workbook for you. It's called Setting the Compass. Download that free workbook. It talks about what I've been discussing all day today. It's about helping you get centered on and I, what was last year look like or the last 12 months of your life? Write a headline for what that would look like and then project what the next 12 months you would like it to be. What does that headline look like? And that's a good starting point for us to really become the man that we want to be by understanding what our journey is going to look like. And so do that. It's a free resource for your listeners. Look, I really enjoyed being on the show today, Randy. Thank you so much for having me on. Yes, it's been a lot of fun when we first were able to connect. Uh, and obviously the research I've done to get prepared for this episode, I just knew that we would be able to connect and have a great conversation, which is exactly what I was hoping for the listeners out there today. So I appreciate you taking your time out of your busy day to join us here on the Rich Mind Podcast. I, I really do appreciate your time. Oh, I loved it. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So guys, uh, and, and ladies too, if you're listening to this, maybe you've got gentlemen in your, in your proximity, right? Whether it's a, a husband, whether it's a brother or a father, it can be anybody. So, but mainly today we're talking to men, we're talking to guys. 
And uh, as you know, obviously, I have a son, I have a grandson, and I'm trying to get better at this idea of working on myself. That way I can create the life, the responsibility for, for him, for their lives, uh, being vulnerable with ourselves, uh, understanding that that what we've been taught, I, that's one thing I've, I've uh, grown up to learn for myself, is that the, the idea of that the go, 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 and the do, 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 and the be, 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 it just... It doesn't have to necessarily be that way. It's not that we can't do that and there isn't uh, anything wrong with those philosophies. But when you're not happy with yourself, when you're not happy with what you're becoming, uh, part of the tagline, even for the branding for myself, is I always like to say, become more. You're working on becoming more every single day. And that's what I'm trying to do for myself. And I think that's what Alan is trying to help him uh, himself. Then obviously with his men's group work as well. So I would recommend get out there and get in proximity through community with gentlemen like Alan, with groups like Alan's and his band of brothers. Uh, See if that might not be a good fit for you. Uh, Find the audio programs, the podcasts, Uh, just take some, some action. He talked about simple, small steps, and that's what it's been for me. This has been a long journey and I don't think it's ever going to end, but it's, it's an active journey. It's something that I'm working on actively every single day. And if you take that responsibility, I promise you, your future self will, you'll look back and you'll be like, wow. I mean, you can't even, won't even imagine where you came from to where you are today. And that's the ripple effect. Mm -hmm. And then that's when you're going to be able to uh, bring that mentee along with yourself, whether it's a, a, I mentioned a a son or a grandson or something like that in your close proximity, and you're going to help them uh, navigate this thing called, we call life a little bit better as well. So I appreciate your time. Appreciate your uh, energy. If you wouldn't mind sharing this episode with your family and friends, I would greatly appreciate that. If you know of men in your uh, family or in your close proximity or in your community that could uh, use value or find value in this episode, I would greatly appreciate you sharing that and get in connection with Alan and uh, join his podcast as well, as well, The Revolutionary Man. Uh, I will leave links to the uh, four-part series we discussed here on the episode in the show notes, and I would recommend you definitely dive into those. Those would be great places for you to get started. So go out there, have a fantastic day, and I look forward to coming back with the next guest again very soon. Until then, bye now.